Hey everyone, it's Matthew here at Midland Pictures. Today we're going to talk about how you can become a power user using Final Cut Pro 10 and Elgato's Stream Deck Mobile. Check it out. Save it for conversation. So let's talk a little bit about the pain that brought me to the solution to my pain, which so far has been Elgato's Stream Deck Mobile. You can tell from the previous tutorials that I've done that I'm a big fan of keyboard shortcuts, and a lot of you have learned some of those shortcuts to up your editing game. Well, sometimes when you're working and doing things over and over again, like a YouTube channel, for example, and you're cutting down 30, 50 minutes of sort of raw vlogging to try to bring it down to something in that 10 to 15 minute range. Well, when you do that over and over again, video after video, you know there's a lot of steps that you repeat and those repetitive tasks are made a lot easier using keyboard shortcuts. So what if you're doing some of those keyboard shortcuts over and over again and the complexity of the keyboard shortcut, and by complexity, I mean it requires using both of your hands to do it as opposed to just one, that complexity feels like it's eating up more time than necessary. It's not a huge deal when you think of just using it once or twice while you're editing, but what if you're doing it 10, 20, 30, 50, 100 times while you're editing a video. Those movements over time add up to lost time. So what if you could use something that allowed you to take some of those more complicated keyboard shortcuts and streamline them into a simple button push? Now, I know a lot of you are going to be thinking, well, why don't you just customize some of the more complex keyboard shortcuts that you use into one button that you can push on your left hand? I do not disagree with you. I think that that is definitely a good way to go. I find that often there's limited options on the left side of the keyboard to make new assignments for your keyboard shortcuts. I've moved in another direction, which is to embrace Elgato's Stream Deck mobile app. Now they have a couple of different options. There's the Stream Deck XL, there's the Stream Deck, and then there's the Stream Deck Mini. And then the fourth option is using Stream Deck mobile on your iPhone or iPad. So I have an older iPad that's kind of just laying around and not being used. Because I had the iPad, I felt it was just more economical to try to use that first and not make an investment in a piece of hardware that at the end of the day, I may not fall in love with. So I got my iPad situated in front of my trackpad and started using the Stream Deck mobile app. First, of course, I needed to customize all of the buttons because I wanted to make sure that not only did the look of it fit sort of the Midland brand, you know, black and white, I wanted to make sure the layout was organized in a way where the keyboard shortcuts that I used the least frequently were on the left side of the Stream Deck mobile, furthest away from my hand, and that the ones I use most frequently are right above my trackpad so I could push those buttons in order to get those keyboard shortcuts I'm using over and over again. So with Elgato Stream Deck app on your computer, you can customize the layout of your Stream Deck mobile app. You can set shortcuts to launch applications, or you can program keyboard shortcuts in specific apps to be able to perform those shortcuts with just the press of one button. So the first thing I had to do is I had to figure out what keyboard shortcuts were the more complicated ones that I'm using the most frequently. So if we look at my Stream Deck mobile, you can see on the top row that I have a number of apps that I most frequently use so that I can just by the touch of a button launch Final Cut, Affinity Designer, System Preferences, things like that. So on the second row, I've created a button for creating a keyword collection, then a button for creating a smart collection. After that, I have a button for creating a compound clip and then a button for the keyboard shortcut to reveal a clip that's in your timeline in the browser. And then the last one in the second row is the shortcut to the transform tool so you can scale and move the position of the clips that you're working with. On the last row on the far left, I have the zoom out keyboard shortcut, the shift Z where you can see your whole timeline. And then I have the keyboard shortcut for adding a default transition to a clip. And then one that I use all the time is the keyboard shortcut for adding a default title. Mine is just a basic title and, that, and that's the control T keyboard shortcut. And then the two most important ones that I use, which are in the bottom right, so they're the easiest ones to press while I'm editing, are the option bracket key commands that allow you to take a vlog and start cutting it down. And that's the one that has really saved me a ton of time. When I'm editing through my vlog and able to just reach up and push the left bracket or the right bracket key and edit down my vlogs, I am doing it way faster than if I'm pulling my hand away from the trackpad and hitting option left bracket or option right bracket. I think that the Stream Deck mobile app alone is worth it just for those two buttons. If the, if the app just had two buttons on it and it was the left bracket and the right bracket, the app would be 
be a huge success for me because it greatly increases my editing time. And again, it keeps me in the creative flow so I'm not breaking out of that to remember keyboard shortcuts or use different uh, methods for editing down my vlogs quickly. So if you're a Final Cut Pro 10 user and you feel like you have all the keyboard shortcuts mastered, you know where all the menu items are that you use most frequently, but you still feel like you could speed up your workflow, that's where the Stream Deck mobile app comes in. All right, so I'm gonna show you how I would normally edit a vlog without the Stream Deck mobile app. I have my keyboard and my trackpad, and that's what I'm gonna be using to cut down the main vlog. So I have here a multi-cam, and in that multi-cam, I have two angles. I have my wide and my close. So when I'm gonna edit, I'm gonna use the option bracket key commands that I've discussed in my previous nine magic tips for Final Cut Pro 10 as a way to quickly trim down the entire vlog so that it goes from, let's see, 38 minutes to somewhere in the 12 to 20 minute ballpark and then further refinement from there. So what I would normally do is play back my video and I know that all this beginning stuff I don't need, so I'm gonna use the option left bracket command to trim that up, zoom in a little bit. Let's maybe fine tune that. And get right up in there. Option left bracket again, trim that up. So I've got a few takes here of my intro it looks like. So we know from right here is where things are good. So I wanna cut all this stuff on the left side of the playhead, so I'm gonna hit option left bracket to do that. And then here we have a big gap, pre uh, presumably where I'm just like getting my, my bearings for the next cut. I'm gonna hit the option uh, left bracket again to trim that up. I've got a, a cut here, so I wanna trim this, this bit of the clip from the left of the playhead to the playhead. So option left bracket is gonna do that. And then let's say all this is good. I'm gonna hit the uh, blade tool and then come up to the next spot and then hit option left bracket again. But you can see as I do that, my hand is having to come away from the trackpad to hit the bracket keys. I'm also having to look down at the keyboard, so I'm taking my eyes off the edit to look down at the keyboard to make sure I enter that keyboard shortcut. And then as I'm wanting to cut back and forth between angles, uh, let's say I want this one to be the wide, but I want this one to be the tight. In order to shift this angle, I need to hit command shift right arrow. And again, I'm pulling my hand away from my trackpad. That may not seem like a big deal when you're talking about once or twice during an edit, but because you're editing a vlog from 40 minutes down to 12, 15, 20 minutes, you're going to be doing that over and over again. And that movement over time adds up to extra time that you're spending in the edit. So let's see how this would look with the Stream Deck mobile app using the option bracket keyboard shortcut condensed down to a single button on the Stream Deck mobile app. So I like to have the iPad positioned so that the left and right bracket keys are right in the top middle of the trackpad. So as we start editing, we're gonna be playing Those back. Stream Deck mobile. So I want a blade there. And again, the blade command is just with my left hand. So I'm already ready to make that keyboard shortcut quickly. Then with my playhead, I know I wanna to skip to here and trim everything to the left of the playhead. So I just hit that hey, button and everything's here. trimmed. Same thing here, let's cut out all this dead air. So Command-B, then move here, hit the, the left bracket button, and we're trimmed down. Same thing here, Command-B, let's trim this down to the left of the playhead, now we're cut down. Same thing here, let's cut this out. Command-B, over here, left bracket. Versus Command-B, move the playhead, option left bracket, then back. Now you may not watch that and go, oh my god, it's incredibly faster, what a time saving. Again, over time, this ends up being much faster to just hit this one button. And that's what I love about Stream Deck Mobile here. Now, some of you have mentioned using the range tool to, de to delete these chunks, and I don't disagree with you that that's a good option. You can hit R, select the range that you wanna delete, hit the delete key, and, and out it goes. I think that's an equally viable option for someone like me, for whatever reason, that coming over to the delete key, even though I could program the delete key as a button here. Switching to the range tool, there's something about it that, I don't know, it's not, it's not bad. I think for me, because I usually play back the Stream Deck mobile app, and then I'll hit the space bar, it's easier for me to just command B it real quick, bring the playhead down and hit the bracket. 
I don't know. It could be just that, you know, I'm one of those users that's in the habit of doing it that way and switching to the range tool might have a little bit of friction for me and just getting used to it. But once I did, it would work much better and I would be happy with it. I think those are the two best options though for editing, editing down a vlog. Using uh, a Stream Deck Mobile with the option bracket key commands shortcutted on the app or using the range tool with the delete key shortcutted on the app. I think the range tool is definitely a good way of doing this and if you're someone that already does it, I'd recommend sticking with it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. But you might find that moving from your mouse to your keyboard to hit that delete key it's just a little bit of extra time that you could save with something like Stream Deck Mobile or maybe even a programmable mouse. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to put two new buttons into my Stream Deck Mobile app and I'm going to position the multi-cam buttons directly above the left and right bracket buttons. I'm also going to create a custom button in Affinity Designer so that I have my own custom icon for those buttons. And then once I have those four buttons on the Stream Deck Mobile, I know that my vlog editing is going to increase in speed significantly. So to do that, I created a custom icon in Affinity Designer. I'll pull that up now so you can take a look at it. So right here I made uh, made this, I think it's a uh, 3000 by 3000 artboard or uh, you know image size and then I export it out as 100 by 100 pixels as a PNG for the Elgato Stream Deck app to handle it as an icon. So I just made kind of a basic icon here to communicate for me what it means to switch between angles. So I've got this one here which has some opacity dropped and then a right angle so that I know I'm, I'm shifting the multi-cam to the right. All right, so you can see here in the Stream Deck app that the layout matches what I have on my iPad, but I'm gonna remove the keyword collection and the smart collection shortcuts and replace them with multi-cam shift left and multi-cam shift right. So we're gonna choose this and I'm gonna do the new keyboard shortcut, which is Command Shift Left Arrow, and I'm gonna name it uh, Multi Cam Left, and then I'm gonna go down here and choose Set from File, and I'm gonna choose Multi Cam Left icon, and then I'm gonna choose this one, and do Command Shift Right Arrow, and call it Multi Cam Right, and then we're gonna switch the icon, Set from File and do multi-cam right icon. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to switch this one over here. So just drag it on over. And you can see it updates immediately on the app and I'm ready to go with switching multi-cam angles. So we'll switch back to Final Cut and let's just throw in a couple cuts here so you can see how I will play this back and switch between the angles. All right, so you can see here that we've got all of our cuts where we wanna switch back and forth between angles. So what I like to do, because my first pass is so precise, is I like to play this back live and switch the angles using the Stream Deck mobile app. I used to have to use the keyboard here to command shift left and right arrows as it played back, but now I can just do it with the Stream Deck mobile app. So we'll start playing this back. iPad, which is just sitting there for the most part unused, and use the Stream Deck mobile app. One of the things that was important to me was to make sure that I wasn't replacing one problem with another. And again, the, the center, and again, my pain, again, so my here's all my stumbles. process is from using my trackpad and my keyboard and having to bring my right hand from my trackpad to the keyboard. Now, this is lagging a little bit because I'm doing a screen recording and this is a 4K timeline, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a little bit slow on playback and it's a 2013 Mac Pro. When I'm not doing this, it plays back smoothly and in real time with no frames being dropped so I can switch back and forth between the angles no problem just using the Stream Deck mobile app. I can also play back at double time so that I'm not actually watching every second of the vlog. I can play it back in double time and sometimes even triple time and switch between angles when I'm you know, going from wide to close. So that's really helpful. It's especially helpful when I make a multi-cam that has just these two angles because I know I can just toggle back and forth. But for the most part, when I'm just editing a straight up vlog with a wide and a close, this is incredibly fast and efficient compared to using command shift left and right arrows. 
So I really like using this as almost like a live switcher while I'm watching back my multicam. So how much does Stream Deck Mobile cost? You can download the app to your iPad or iPhone for free, but in order to pair it with a computer, you need to purchase a subscription. So there's a monthly subscription for $2.99 a month, or you can purchase an annual subscription for $24.99. And the annual subscription gets you a little bit of savings by buying in bulk. I purchased the annual subscription and I'm glad I did because I know that Stream Deck Mobile is going to be a part of my workflow for the foreseeable future. And I think at that price point, a lot of you power users out there or users that want to become power users, you're editing content very frequently and you want to save as much time as possible in your edits. I think this is a worthwhile investment in your workflow to save that time, get simpler with your editing, stay in the creative flow and be much faster. As you can see from some of my thumbnails and some of my videos about my desk upgrade, that Elgato Stream Deck mobile app has been on my iPad on my desk uh, for the last few months and it has been a game changer for my editing process. I love using it, especially with my vlog content. It has been huge for getting through the vlog content as quickly and efficiently as possible so I can turn out videos for all of you. I'll add some links in the description to Elgato's YouTube page so you can see the Stream Deck mobile and the Stream Deck uh, hardware in action. And then I'll put a link to a video that helps show you how to actually program the keyboard shortcuts to these buttons so that you can get up and running as quickly as possible if you decide to pick up this app. It's available in the App Store and you can download it to your iPhone or iPad and use it there and then purchase the subscription in the app so you can get connected to your computer and start programming it for Final Cut Pro 10 or whatever other creativity apps you use that are compatible with the app. All right, so I think that's gonna do it, everyone, on this breakdown of the Stream Deck mobile app. Again, if you wanna be a power user, check it out. Hit me up in the comments if you have any questions, thoughts, concerns, whatever. And if you have any tips for how I can use the Stream Deck mobile app even better, faster, more efficient, please let me know. Thanks again, everyone, for watching. Until the next one, I will see you soon.